Mounting. Mounting. Mount. Mounting. 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 This addendum video is all about mounting COVID barriers. I'm going to be showing you how to weld steel bar braces. I'm going to be showing you how to make braces out of steel track. I'm going to be showing you some tricks of the trade. Then we are going to run through some case studies, which are just examples of different locations and how each location was installed. So if you're looking for a deep dive into the braces, you can jump to that. If you are relatively fresh to this world of building and installing things, I suggest you take the time and just watch the whole thing through. It'll be pretty informative. Enjoy. Part 1. Eighth inch steel brace. Okay, so these are the steel braces. They are made of eighth inch thick and two and a half inch wide steel bar. I buy them from steel distributors. They come in 24 foot lengths and are something like $25. So quite inexpensive. For me and my setup, these are very fast to make. I also like these because they're heavy, heavier than the steel tracks. However, if you're following the design principles in the primary video, you might realize that these brackets are actually only useful for when your barrier goes right down to the counter. If you're going to do an elevated barrier, say 13 inches off the counter, and you need braces, you probably want to switch over to the steel track section. Finally, if you have a welder, you know what is happening here, so I'll let you watch the video in peace and enjoy the music.
part two, Steel Track Braces, AKA Johnny's. All right, these are the Steel Track Braces and we are looking at three finished pieces. We are going to make one of them together now. These holes are for mounting to the bottom of the panels or taping down the braces to counters if you are doing an elevated panel. And these holes are for mounting to the panel sides and joining two panels together. I'm using track so that you can still add studs if need be. You can easily make the height taller or the base longer with the studs because they will fit right in there and you can just screw them in. I'm cutting this first piece at 33 inches. You cut these by first cutting down the sides and then bend it to get your snips in there and then down that center part. This is the 33 inch base piece right here. I'm marking one inch back and putting an angle. It's easy to get confused, so I suggest working with a Sharpie in this way. Then we're going to bend it down. Now we hammer it flat, nice and flat. We need to drill two mounting holes in the front. I'm putting down a piece of plywood to protect my drill bit. It's these two holes here that we're making right now. Now we're going to cut a 15 inch piece. Again, you first cut the sides as close to parallel as possible, no biggie. Like the frames, these are designed to absorb error. Okay. We want to mount this an inch from the edge. You put this in sideways, then spin it nearly in place. You will see me do that again later. This needs to be more or less level when you do this, but don't worry too much. It's going to move around a lot as we work, and we are going to set the angle of it properly in a little bit. These are all self-tapping screws. This one has a larger head, best for drywall applications, this has a smaller but thick head. Both are self-tapping. And this one is my favorite for this application. It's just really sharp and works great. I'm gonna use all of them in this video just to show you that they all work. I've used the vice grips here because otherwise the metal is too flexible. You need to clamp or hold them together to pierce through them both. There's just too much flex at the end of that track there. You can do that with a pair of channel locks. You can also do it with your hand if necessary, especially if you're using the sharp black piercing screws. With the next piece, I will be able to demonstrate this flex issue much better. All right, so we're going to cut the angle support 13 inches long. I put angles on my pieces like that, again, just to keep track. When you're working really fast, that kind of stuff gets lost in the mix. So you see here, I'm putting the piece in sideways and bending it into position. I have been putting my braces at a five degree angle, a small, tiny angle just to keep the weight towards the back. Okay, now I'm going to show you this flex issue. You see the track on the outside edge? It has flexibility. You don't want to drill there. You want to drill where the track is solid. That gives you the resistance you need to go through both pieces. If I drilled on the other edge that I pressed with my hand there, 
it would just send the bottom track out of the way as it came through the first piece, rather than piercing them both. If this doesn't quite make sense, it will when you get to work, so you can look forward to that. I should have done this earlier, but didn't, so here we go. I'm going to put the two holes in the top of the vertical part of this brace. And there you go. This is a super strong and very versatile brace. I made three of them in like, I don't know, 35 minutes. Now I'm going to show you how to mount to these. I'm not actually screwing in the panel from the bottom because I'm alone and it's annoying to do, but normally you would. You can see here it is halfway over the brace. So I'm just using one side of this brace to screw into the panel at the top and the bottom. Okay, let's get the second piece on now. It's able to stand like that in part because of the five degree angle. You can also see there's something up. The frames are not square or the table. We are not building a spaceship and when installed, these panels will look and work great. Okay, so both are screwed together here and now let's go install them in a deli. I'm just inspecting the counter, kind of making a plan. This is my first time installing on site with these Johnny braces, and it looks like we are going to have to use these backwards. You'll see, I pause a lot to figure out what I'm up to. So that's how you would normally use the brace, but because the countertop is so narrow, and I want this at the back of the counter, I have to put them in backwards, and you'll see how that works. It's totally fine. Then I also realize there's an issue, because I need to be right over this glass hardware. I didn't have a tape measure on me and I was in a rush, so I didn't go back to my car to grab it. What I ended up doing was using my blade as a measurement. So I placed it as a spacer from the bottom of the angled piece there on the bracket to the end of the glass. Then I accounted by eye for the distance I need to get past that hardware and put a mark on the piece. For this one, I again used the blade to match the distance of the barrier braces to the edge of the counter by measuring with my blade. This time I can mark the brace right at the glass because there's no hardware there to account for. By using the blade as a spacer in this way, the panel will be at the same measurement on the counter even though the bases are at different lengths to account for the hardware on the right side. I've got to cut about 4 inches ahead of my marks. My point here is that you can use anything as a measuring tool. I often use my body to take measurements in stores. A panel could be described as a shoulder to fingertips plus forearm to end of fist with a door at open hand from the left. Now I'm going to cut them at those marks. I first bend then bang it flat. I actually started hammering too hard but went softer. I didn't want to damage the tile below the carpet. Now that flap gets folded back. I definitely should have had gloves. I just didn't bring them. I forgot. Okay, now see I'm flipping it so it's making an L bracket at the end of this brace. I'll do it again, speed it up. Soda can spacers and the gentleman behind the counter to help me keep this up. Both of these braces are just taped down, so they are taped in the front. I'll show you a shot of that in a sec. That's the right side. I taped over all that bent metal and stuff. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it works. Again, there's always more complicated and more beautiful, better ways of doing things. I'm just trying to show you the fastest and most functional. Okay, then I'm taping the tabs in the front or whatever, because now they are actually the back of these braces these tabs right here.
I'm screwing it in through the holes that we put there in the shop, just one of them. Then I need a sharp fine thread drywall screw. I brought some in my pocket, kind of like the little black screws used to assemble the braces, but these ones are a half inch long. It just goes right through the metal and into the wood. Self tappers could work as well, but because they drill away the metal, they also drill away the wood and are not ideal for this application. They would work though. Part 3. Tricks of the Trade Triangle Joint as Mount Okay, so I'm just showing you how to use a triangle joint as a mount. The most important thing I want to point out here is that even if you are making cardboard triangle joints, you can just make a few extra. Put glue on both sides and you have the same piece. It doesn't need to be connected to wood to have strength. Just put glue on both sides of the cardboard and you've got these joints. I definitely suggest doing this, whether you are making joints out of Baltic ply, masonite, or cardboard. They're very handy, they're cheap, they're easy to make. Just slip it into your process. My dyslexia got me again, so this is how the corrugation should be oriented when you make a triangle for mounting purposes. It's different than the frame. So now I'm pulling out one of my Baltic ply joints. I'm going to put four holes in this guy. When you're drilling holes for screws, you just want to make sure it's the diameter of the screw itself and that it's smaller than the head. Now that I have said it, it's obvious, but hey, who knows. Here I'm replacing a metal flat bar and there it is. I took the old one off and put the new one on. I did it for you, so get to work on your barriers. Screw plastic. Okay, this is more about while you're installing. If all of a sudden you realize you need to screw into plastic, I just want to show you, you know, how not to do it. How to kind of do it, and the best way to do it. Alright, so let's take a look here. First I'm going to take this coarse drywall screw. This can represent any screw at all, just any screw, be it a pan head, fine thread, wood screw, whatever. Basically just, you know, your standard screw with a sharp tip. This just will never work with plastic on its own. But let's show you why. Okay, you will get hot enough to displace it, and then as soon as you get in there, it's going to break it. And yeah, sorry, autofocus. There you go. I am sacrificing a door. I guess I'm just tired and desperate to have this video done. Okay, so here. This is another technique. You can use any type of screw in plastic. You just need to pre-drill a hole that's a tiny bit smaller than the screw itself. Now, I actually picked a drill bit that wasn't quite big enough. You'll see how that creates some little cracking, some hairline cracks. So it wasn't the right drill bit. This is totally possible, you just need to take the time to pick the right drill bit. This would have been, you know, acceptable-ish. You see those little cracks right there? So you didn't break the panel, but it's not good form. I needed my drill bit to be a tiny hair bigger. Okay, now I already put a self tapper in there. I'm going to remove it and put it back. So these are the self tappers. They work great. And this is just like drilling a hole through plastic. It's going to take a little while. You've got to get it to speed. You don't want to force it. You just want to kind of melt the plastic out of your way. Okay, so let's take a look. There's the self-tapper and, of course, the regular screw.
tape mount and tape door. Okay, this is a tape mount that I like quite a bit. It can take the place of an L bracket. This is a pretend situation, a hypothetical for the purposes of this demonstration. So here you can see how wobbly this is. Now, you know, maybe that wobble doesn't matter. I'm just using this as an example of what this technique can do, which you might use in some other way. I've used this a lot. Here's one example. I have put that white plastic down there because my tape will not stick well to the steel on the top of my work table. And I just wanted to show you how effective this is. We are going to do this twice. This is a nice clean way to mount to the sides of panels because it's minimal and very effective. Now here's the key thing. Each joint, quote unquote, requires two pieces of tape. You need to pull against each piece on each side. So the first one that you do needs to go the furthest in. Now this is with the sticky side of the tape up and it's bent around the back. And now there's a little flap of tape sticking out the front and I'm going to tape on top of it and the counter. Okay, now I'm doing the other side of this joint. Again, the sticky side up. I'm sort of just sliding it underneath the frame, taping the front and letting the back just be loose. Now I'm going to put tape over the back so it's sticky side to sticky side and then a bit more remaining tape onto the counter. You need to push. This is how you get the tape to hold the tension. Now watch. It's really quite strong. I was super surprised. So this is a little close-up version. Okay, wobbly. So just a little bit of tape. I have to lift up the frame to get it actually underneath sticky side up. I'm sliding it underneath far back. It's got to be the furthest piece, the first one. And yeah, that's annoying. I'm going to keep realizing I can't do that. I'm taping it to the back and the sticky side is up. Another piece of tape on that tape and then to the counter, quote unquote. Give it a little stretch. So now this could still move forward and the second half of the joint is what stops it from moving forward. So you are locking it forward and back. You do need two sides. This only works with two pieces. Taping on the front. At the back there is the sticky side up and I'm going to put the tape on it and the counter. Add tension. Watch, both of these are super solid. This only works with packing tape, by the way. It doesn't work with blue tape. I'm going to cut these off to show you the difference. It's a little reminder of how it was before. Big difference, works great. Try and use this trick in a bunch of locations. Super problem solving. Tape door. If you discover last minute that you need a hole in your barrier, here's the best way to do it. This is a tape door. You're going to tape off a section on both sides. Here I'm gonna do a small rectangle. So I'm taping it in the front. and I'm taping it in the back. So I'm gonna take my blade, once I've taped both sides, and cut three sides of this rectangle. Now I'm gonna make this a flap that uh, opens and closes.
there you go. Tape door. Shrink wrap economy. Just a little something about the type of shrink wrap you buy. So there is the smaller 42 inch by 62 inch on the left. The larger one on the right is 62 inch by 210 inches. If you're just going to do a single location and you don't need a panel longer than 59 inches, go for the smaller package. It's a very manageable size and works great. I've done over 20 stores at this point and I should have started with the larger packet, the 62 by 210 inch packet. I'm going to explain that to you right now. So this is my standard 59 inch panel with the door. Now look, I can make a bunch out of that larger piece there because the max width that I made at 59 was for that 62 inch dimension. And that is the width of the 210 inch sheet. Right, so you get a bunch in there. Now let's look at those smaller panels. So this next panel is 36 inches. And what you can see here is that there is essentially an equal amount of waste right there. So those two rectangles, that's trash. Don't get me wrong, I kept all my scraps in case I needed a really small panel, but my point here is that both scrap pieces are the same size, and so you think, okay, well it doesn't matter. But now look at this piece here. This is the 26 inch piece, and the difference is pretty big. So that's twice as much waste on the left as on the right. And you know, maybe you say, well, you just need another 26 inch panel but it doesn't actually work that way. First of all, 26 plus 26 is 52. Our width on that smaller piece is 42. But in addition to that, you kind of never have the same size. It's always different sizes, so my point is that the size plastic right there, that's an awkward size. You're rarely going to have a panel you need that size, and generally, you're going to need something bigger. So, that's the economy, and basically the bigger sheets are better. They produce considerably less waste. Case Studies Introduction What follows now are just a few case studies. I'm going to walk you through how I've installed random places I've had the opportunity to refilm or film. If you are interested in this, just watch them all. I'm trying to help give people completely new to this world of building some inspiration for the many various ways to mount panels. I also often had an extra panel and stopped into a deli to get a beer or something and saw that they needed a barrier. So I put it up right there and then. The key to this is to remain creative. Bergen and Washington. Okay. So this is one of those stores that I put up the standard operating barrier. The one before I realized the mistakes that I was making, and to be clear, I was rushing. I was responding to people begging me to put up barriers after the first one that I made out of Plexi. So I was just running. It wasn't until I made this video that I realized the mistakes that I was making. So I made these guys a standard barrier with the door and came back a week or two later to get shots of it and saw that it was gone. And they said that it wasn't useful to them. It was too small of an opening and covered too much of the counter. So I'm going to install a new one, a single panel, but still poorly conceived. I'm going to install this panel at the front of the counter. I went back and forth with the gentleman working there about the height. He wanted it to be quite high. I was trying to get it as low as possible I was trying to limit his exposure to people's, you know, to COVID. He was trying to make sure that the counter still functioned as a counter. The solution to that again is to put it in the center of the counter. But anyways, I'm about to mount this at about 15 inches high at the front of the counter. So right, now I'm taking my self-tapping screws because I'm going to mount this with rope to the ceiling, actually into the thin metal of that light fixture. I'm looking for my self-tappers I don't really remember why I used these long ones. I definitely thought about it, and actually it was probably the wrong decision. You know, it happens. I'm going to tie this rope in a knot around this screw and then tape it. This tape makes a handle. I can hold that tape like a handle, and then instead of the rope wrapping around the screw and my drill, it's just going to stay in one position as I spin the screw. 
or screw this group. It worked really well. See, here I have mounted to the metal, not the ceiling. Then I grabbed a couple of these brass hooks and I put them into the top of my frame. I use my hand here, but actually I busted out my channel locks after I leave the shot. I used my channel locks to get the hook all the way down because it got difficult by hand. You'll find a solution. My channel lock didn't save the day here. My ability to use something other than my hand saved the day. So here, I have now hooked the panel on with knots. I used the help of people around to make sure it was level or straight, which became an important semantic distinction. Then I taped it to the front of the plastic here and here. It's good enough. You can push and pull on it, and in fact, you're gonna see me use the duster on this guy. It moves around, but it's not going anywhere. While I have your attention, I did end up putting this back about 15 inches into the middle of this counter, and I lowered it by about three inches or so. So here's the deli counter in the same store. I put the base of this panel against that little ledge in the back there and leaned it against those bottles of pickles and totally done. Quite simple. Try and think creatively and simply. We are not building rockets. We are helping protect communities and we are kind of in a rush. Halsey and Tompkins. This barrier was installed backwards. However, that wasn't a fabrication or design error. The person at the register decided as I was installing it that they preferred it this way. Which is fine, but you can tell that it's backwards. A simple installation. I screwed into this register cover box at the base and at the top, and it's taped down there at the far corner on the hinge side of the door, and you've already seen that in the tape mount section. Putnam and Clausen. Okay, so this is my first location where I use the steel studs, what I'm calling the Johnnies. I asked them to close this door for the period of time that I was there. They have the swiveling side window. That's one of the panels and that's the second. This is the one that I use the Johnny braces with. You'll see that I use them quote unquote backwards. I cut a bit extra at their end, hammered it flat, and bent it over the side there, an impromptu L bracket. Then I screwed in the panel through the front of those guys. I used my original holes and then a fine thread drywall screw designed to go through these types of studs. Basically a long version of the screws that we use to assemble these brackets, two on each side. This panel happens to be made of cardboard joints and it's really strong. I also taped down what was designed to be the front end there. Okay, now let's take a look at the panel at the register. One single panel and just an L bracket on the left and an L bracket on the right. Super simple. Halsey and Throop. Okay. This is another of these simpler installations. I used a different package of shrink wrap to be able to make this a larger panel. It is 75 inches wide. The package comes 62 by 210 inches. So yeah, I just screwed it into the right side here. I used that waving pattern in the steel of that shelf. I just put a panhead screw on the left and right side of one of those steel bars thus locking it in place. Then brackets on both sides of this box. Another hole in the shrink wrap. It's becoming a signature of sorts. I held it up with two boxes of soda. Holds up great. These guys weren't even sure that they wanted it and I think they're going to keep it. You will note neither are wearing masks. Fulton and Tompkins. Okay, so this is a super simple install. The counter was 56 inches, so I made this piece 55 and a half. Fit right in. I elevated this with two six packs and a Hershey's chocolate bar. 
uh, to get it just above the height of the six pack, which did not work. During all the fuss and muss, those chocolate bars broke and the barrier slipped just below the height of the bottle tops. So, you know, lesson learned. And yeah, tape on both sides, back and front, and worked great. Bergen and Franklin. This is the second COVID barrier that I made after the first one that I had made out of plexiglass. I very unnecessarily reinforced the double stick tape with thin cutoffs left over from milling 2x4s. I was concerned that the shrink wrap would come off. This was before I had decided to apply the shrink wrap with heat and pressure. I wasn't worried about it falling apart that day, but more so concerned about how it would fare over a month or so. As I record this, most of my barriers are two months old and are doing great. Also, I made it backwards, which is why you can see those extra pieces of wood on the outside of this barrier. This has the door and everything, and they're super happy with it. Of the 14 that I had done when I started this video, three were taken down. So yeah, this is just an L bracket in there, and there's one behind all that stuff. There's another L bracket connected to this refrigerator at the bottom left of the barrier. The owner of this deli was kind of nervous screwing into the side of his refrigerator, but that's a panel and a little bit of space. So long as you use a small enough screw, you shouldn't have any trouble screwing into that. To convince him, I found a hole left by a screw from something else. And finally, there's that bracket connected just to this movable plastic display. So pretty simple installation and taped in the front, I guess unnecessarily. Yeah, so there you go. Thank you.